Similar to the addition of water across the carbonyl is going to be the addition of alcohols. And we can use any alcohol, use ROH here generically here. Uh, and the result here, we're going to add an OR to the carbon and an H to the oxygen. So it's an alcohol that's been added across that carbon oxygen bond. We call this a hemiacetal. Now, technically, hemiacetals are when you add an alcohol across an aldehyde. And some people say hemiketal for when you add across a ketone. Uh, but modern convention just calls them all hemiacetals at this point. So that's what the convention I'm going to go with. And one thing to note and recognize on hemiacetal, you've got a carbon that's got single bonds to two different oxygens. One's an O with a carbon chain and one's an OH. That's how you recognize you've got a hemiacetal. Uh, and in this case, we look at the base catalyzed mechanism here. So uh, we call it base catalyzed or again with a strong nucleophile. And in this case, you've got the alkoxide in solution along with the alcohol. And we're going to just simply start off by doing nucleophilic attack, step one, just like we did with uh, base catalyzed hydration. That'll form us our alkoxide ion. And again, we'll protonate it. In this case, we'll protonate it not by water, because we don't have water, but by an, a molecule of the alcohol itself. Cool, and this, those two steps get us our hemiacetal. So again, two steps just like it was for hydration with base catalyzed. First one is nucleophilic attack. Second step is protonation. Now, one thing to note over here, I say no further reaction, and it doesn't seem to make any sense yet. And uh, the only context where it makes sense is we'll see with the acid catalyzed mechanism, we can actually go further than just the hemiacetal, as we'll see. Now, we'll take a look at the acid catalyzed mechanism. And uh, the big difference here is we can add one equivalent and end up with a hemiacetal, or we can add a second equivalent in excess and end up with what we call, I like to say, a full blown acetal. Uh, the term hemi here means like half or partial, so it's kind of like a half acetal. Whereas here, the acetal, we've now added a second equivalent of the alcohol. And the key is we are in acid. So under acidic conditions, you can turn an OH, which is a bad leaving group, by protonating it into a good leaving group, making it water. And if it leaves, it makes room for that second equivalent of the alcohol to attack so we can get the full-blown acetal. You can't do this under basic conditions because you can't protonate under basic conditions. So that's why in the last slide we said no further reaction, but here we have a chance of adding this second equivalent. Uh, let's kind of see how this works. Uh, we've got acid. I haven't identified what the acid it is often, maybe just sulfuric or something. But in this case, in all likelihood, it dissociates in the alcohol to protonate the alcohol, same way it would dissociate in water to protonate water. So that's probably our acid in this case, and that's how we're going to protonate in step one, just like we protonated in step one of the acid catalyzed mechanism for hydration. Cool, so there's our protonated ketone. And our alcohol is a weak nucleophile just like water is, no negative charge. So, and in this case, it won't react with a ketone to any significant extent, but it will react with a protonated ketone. So attacking the carbonyl. So again, our first step here was protonation, but our second step here is the nucleophilic attack now. And so now our alcohol is attached, the whole thing. And so this alcohol now is three bonds. So in a positive formal charge, it's highly acidic, and we're going to deprotonate it. So not quite done yet in forming the hemiacetal here. So our third step will be deprotonation. In all likelihood, it's probably just another molecule of the alcohol that's going to come and do this. Cool. And that gets us to our hemiacetal. Now, what if we wanted to go all the way to the acetal? Well, then we take this a step further. So, and now we protonate the OH, again, probably from another molecule of our protonated alcohol, maybe even the one we just formed right there. Cool, from here, we've now got a good leaving group, water. Cool, and now that we've got a good leaving group, we are in all likelihood going to make it leave. So 
And in this case, we got one of two ways we can show this here. A lot of people just show water leaving, but most of the time, rather than showing resonance, we'll just show the major resonance contributor to the next structure by kicking these electrons down at the same time. Cool. And so again, I'm just showing one of the resonance structures. The other resonance structure shows the positive charge on this carbon right here. So, but this thing's a pretty decent electrophile as well, and another equivalent of our alcohol will come and attack him. Cool, almost there. Cool. And then we finally deprotonate another molecule, the alcohol to come and deprotonate just like we did on the way to forming the hemiacetal. So I'm going to kind of skip that step just to save some time. It's exactly the same thing, but three steps to form the hemiacetal and then one, two, three, and a fourth step in forming the acetal. Now, one thing to note here, and we haven't really discussed it here, but if you notice, when we had water leave here, in this next step, we would have formed a water molecule as well. And it turns out that is technically a product of this reaction. And it turns out if we added water with a bunch of acid, we can actually reverse the entire reaction. So it turns out we can shift the equilibrium all the way back to the reactants if we add H3O+. Plus. So it, this is all reversible. Every step in this mechanism is completely reversible. Uh, the reactants, the products, they're not all that different in stability. And so it turns out if you want to shift this equilibrium back to the left according to Le Chatelier's principle, add a bunch of water with acid. Still needs an acid catalyst, but add a bunch of water with it to shift it back, being that water is a product. And so adding H3O plus totally reverses it. We'll see this is kind of a common trend for a few of these reactions in this chapter as well.